It is easy to overlook. A historical landmark on Pleasant Street in Worcester, the only sign on the outside of what was once the hub of nightlife here, mosaic tiles at the feet of unremarkable doors leading to the Olympia Theater. It's a magnificent building made out of fine quality materials and it's irreplaceable in downtown Worcester. Deborah Packard with Worcester's Preservation Society says this space originally opened in 1891 as Lothrop's Opera House. The Olympia is the city's oldest theater and perhaps one of only a few frozen in time. Covered in years of neglect, broken down bits of the grand decor, though they try, cannot mask the beauty of the past. I see the stage and I see one or two lights and you know that there were lights all around the, the stage. I just can imagine how exciting that was to come here and see those lights. Chairs beaten down by the weight of time with intricate carvings peek through insulation that once kept the sounds of performance tightly surrounding audiences of up to 1,300 people. It's a great combination of the energy of the past and when it first opened it was very unusual because the orchestra was all female. So I like to envision what was going on, especially since it's had so many iterations. Iterations that called for an evolving clientele. A theater venue and then later on it became a cinema and then a uh, so-called fine arts cinema. Fine arts meaning? The meaning um, risque pornography, I guess you would call it. Torn and tattered, the once elegant red carpets still cover the creaking steps that lead to the balcony and a treasure hunt of sorts. That's where we met the building's caretaker, Glenn Piper, one of the only people who has been inside here in the last decade. This is nostalgic coming in here. And they used to use it, raise the curtains and uh, prop rigging's up above. While Piper hopes the curtain will once again rise on this stage, he holds dear the theatrical antiques still in working order. This is awesome. What is it? <laughs> It's an arc light projector. It's what they used to do the old movies with. And how did it work? They used a carbon rod, and this would create an arc there, and it would be kind of like welding. They would use the, the bright light for wow. burning the plug short. Like a Hollywood ending, Packard hopes for revival here. It's just so exciting for me to think about what it could become and I think this could be a really special place. Head a few miles east and you will find a spacious lot from an abandoned era when drive-in theaters brought families together for a night out. Edgemere Drive-In opened in 1955, the era of the heyday of the drive-ins, 50s and 60s. Long, vacant, and overgrown, the large imposing sign of the Edgemere Drive-In still jets out onto Route 20, a fragmented reminder nearly begging for thoughts of days long gone. I have two lines of cars all the way out onto Route 20 with uh, police officers out there doing traffic, trying to get in here. A pastime that grew quickly and fizzled out faster than the bubbles in a lime ricky. When the videotapes and VCRs came out, that was kind of the start of the demise of the drive-ins because there were a lot of them around. The Edgemere, now 76 acres of potential, screened its last show in 2004. The Edgemere drive-in site will soon see new life, a supermarket and 250 apartments. As for the Olympia Theater in Worcester, in 2019, a local pair stepped forward with plans to purchase and renovate the property into a venue for live music. They haven't been able to move forward with those plans because of COVID-19, and the property remains on Preservation Worcester's list of most endangered properties. Next, have drone, we'll explore.